Welcome everyone, I'm back again, this time in the brand new studio, which I'm sure doesn't mean a whole lot to y'all, but it means a lot to me. With that being said, welcome to another exciting episode of Retro Game Treasure Tuesday. And as always, we'll be using our mathematical genius to calculate just how good this month's box really is. You know, I realized I haven't been saying that in recent videos, which may have been confusing to newer subscribers, but let's get this turd out of the way. Uh, Powerpuff Girls paint the Townsville green on the Game Boy Color. Yeah, I got another Powerpuff Girls game a couple of months ago, and this is pretty much more or less the same, which I still think is sad. Like I said before, out of all the classic Cartoon Network cartoons, this is the one that could potentially make a good game. Hell, maybe even a side-scrolling shooter. That could be kind of cool. With that being said, at least I made it to a boss this time, so there's that. But the controls are still kind of funky, and there's really no satisfaction when attacking enemies. It's hard to explain, but in a good beat-em-up, it's kind of like you can actually feel when making contact with the enemies. That's not the case here. Half the time, I'm not even sure if I'm hurting the enemies. Anyway, not really much else to say about this game. You know, I really thought that said poo for a second. Overall, it's pretty much mediocre crap. If you were a hardcore fan of this series, maybe you could find some enjoyment, but for me, I don't see myself coming back to it. I'm gonna give it a D. Next up, we got a PS1 game, and for the first time, we didn't get the manual, which kind of sucks. But we did get this Retro Game Treasure Limited Edition cover, number 21. I don't know if that's supposed to be a joke, but anyway, we got The Unholy War. I want to start off by saying thank you, Zach, for writing all over the case and the game. I don't know why people did this crap back in the day, but I know I never did. But you know, Zach, if you're watching, right here, buddy. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Anyway, the concept of this game is kind of cool. I had no idea what the hell I was doing at first. And after about 10 minutes, I still wasn't 100% confident that I knew what I was doing. Essentially, you have two teams battling it out, and once every member of one team is defeated, the other team wins. Some enemies seemed way too OP, though like the Fire Witch here. Thankfully, I did find a way to make the game easier, which allowed me to win, but barely. For me, it all felt like luck whenever I won a round. I'm sure there's a strategy, but who the hell has time for that? The characters are kind of cool, and I did like the different environments you battle on. However, it was really hard for me to keep track of my character, especially when the opponent could fly and my character couldn't. Overall, I think this would be a better two-player game, especially if both players have no idea what the hell they're doing. I'll give it a C. Last up, we have a Famicom game that I have no idea how to pronounce. This game was somewhat difficult, but kind of fun. From what I gathered, this game is based off an anime, so of course I know nothing about it. But it was renamed here in the States as Ninja Kid. I will admit, I enjoyed this game more than I expected. You start off on an overworld map, and it does appear that the stages are random, which is pretty cool. You have to either kill a certain amount of enemies or collect these white tadpole-looking things. This is a family channel, goddammit. Anyway, eventually two doors open up, and I'm not sure if it matters which door you pick, but you either go back to the overworld map or fight some sort of boss. I will say I do like the horror theme. It's even got Frankenstein. That's Frankenstein. The cool thing about getting some of these import games is it can sometimes expose you to games released here in America that you may have not thought about buying or even knew existed. Unfortunately though, most of the time it does seem like the American versions are more expensive, but I'm not gonna lie, if I come across Ninja Kid out in the wild, I might have to pick it up. I'm gonna give it a B.
Well, anyway, guys, that gives us a mediocre score of C. Not the best month, but not a waste of my time. I do want to take a quick second to thank all the recent subscribers I've had over the last couple of months. I'm really hoping to hit 500 by the end of the year. I know that doesn't seem like much, but for me, it's a huge accomplishment. Anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. You know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you again next time.